So welcome to Northern Powerhouses, our business success stories series of interviews where we discuss with local business leaders, their backgrounds, their successes and challenges and what's really driving them forwards. And this afternoon, I'm delighted that we have with us Alex Hughes, who's co-founder at the Custom Studio. So Alex, thanks for coming on board. If you'd like to introduce yourself, the Custom Studio, what you do and how you do it and how you help people, that would be wonderful. Great stuff. Uh, thanks for having us on, Chris. Um, so yeah, I'm Alex from Custom Studio. Um, we're a brand and design specialist based out of Leeds. Um, and we're kind of in business because we believe that every good business, like founder, those big dreamers, I suppose, deserve a chance to pursue something that means something to them. Like whether it's um, achieving a certain goal in the business or kind of just making a change for good in the world. And the way we help them do that is through design and brand like yep. obviously we haven't got the answer to it all but brand is where we kind of um kind of help businesses achieve that that side of the goal and what we've noticed is like um a business is especially in the sort of um early stages maybe like either starting up or sort of ready for growth or you know four or five years in sometimes their business takes off and they're you know they're they get the they're doing the actual doing of the business, but sometimes they leave the brand behind, or it's an afterthought, an after investment. Yeah, and we find that sometimes there's a if you if you think about that at the start, it gives you the opportunity to really accelerate the growth rather than kind of retrofit it after you've done lots of lots of good work. So yeah, that's that's kind of as in a nutshell. I'm, I'm co-founder, so um, a business partner is strategy and client facing, um, and I'm creative and uh, and design side of the business. Right. So I've got two two sets of skills that kind of harmonise most of the time, um, when, and um, yeah, give our clients the best that we can. So, yeah, brilliant. That's it. Brilliant. It, 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 it takes it back, actually, Alex, because I remember, and I know a brand is a lot more than a logo, but, but you know, logo is part of this. And I remember my first business, our logo was, I think it was designed by our MD's sister or sister-in-law. Um, she was fairly artistic and it was OK. But, you know, you know as you said, five, six years in, it really didn't represent the business that we were. And when we had a, a rebranded exercise, it really did transform, I think, the image that we had and how people yeah. perceived us. So I could totally, t t totally get that. But I mean, perhaps just cover that. Brand is, is more than logo, isn't it? What, what, how, what, yeah, what does brand cover from your perspective? Yeah, definitely. Like it's funny, like logo is almost like the shorthand for yeah everything that your brand is. So when you see um, the Coca-Cola logo, you don't even need to read it, but you understand sort of yes. what it's about. It's about bringing joy and um, kind of happiness in the moment. And, but underneath that, there's lots of like stuff that are bubbling away. So there's like the foundations that you build, which is like strategically, like why are you in business beyond making money? Like yep. getting clear is, you know, it's fundamental to bringing people along for the ride. So it's yes. not just about quick sales, this, that, and you like, You build like brand advocates by understanding who you are, explaining it clearly, and yep. um, kind of communicating in a way that, that allows people to like into the brand, and so there's a there's a great uh, designer called uh, Marty Numier. I think Marty Numier. I can never pronounce his surname, but he always says that a brand is what they say about you, not what you say about yourself. So uh, it's not what you say; it's what they say about you. And okay. what he's getting at is that you've got a certain amount of control of what you put out and what you say, and whether it's a uh, online or social or um, you know whatever touch point that you have with your customers but it's only does so much in influencing how they think and feel about your business and the key is to kind of understand that and kind of allow the best possible feeling towards your brand um and so yeah a logo is a key part of it the colors are a key part of it but they're not necessarily the be all and end all it's kind of all the all the two spirits that come come before and and during and after um, yeah, or, it makes yeah. All this, it makes all the sense, Alice. We, you know, in what we do work with clients, we very much talk about you know culture, values, purpose, um, yeah. to to make sure we're clear what that looks like. And I always talk about you know that's what attracts both clients and um, and employees. You know, any stakeholder yeah. should be aligned to those values. So I guess what what we don't do and it, it, it's, is 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 take that and turn it into what would be considered a brand, but it is. I think it's fundamental to know where we're headed and why 
why we do what we do past just making money, as you rightly say. Yeah, hundred percent. Like um, the business, like and the brand, uh, are like one and the same. Like imagine it as two two strings of a a railway, two lines on a railway. Like you both yep. go in the same direction. You both need each other. One's one's internal and kind of like how we are and act as a business, and the one's external and shows yep. and explains how you act. He's going to put a nail in the coffin pretty quick and then doing loads of good stuff, but not saying and explaining how all the good stuff you are. He's going to, you're just going to run out of, you're going to run out of steam sooner or later. So yeah, we find that thinking about them simultaneously is, is the sweet spot. It's like a, yeah. obviously you have to get the business off the ground and get it, the basics started. But at that point, you're at the perfect place to really like inject some, I don't know, Eunice into it, some longevity into it, yeah. like uh, how, where you can shape your business um, yeah. and who you bring with you. Perfect. Makes perfect sense. So Alex, maybe if, if you could talk a little bit about your background, how you got into business and why this particular one would be great. Um, yeah. Uh, how far do you want me to go? Like why I'm in design or just like kind of why, how this business started? Yeah. Sort of how it all came about, I guess. Oh, all right. Well, I'll go all the way back then. Uh, really? But uh, origin story as a designer, let's say, it's not very glamorous. Uh, I'd like to say it was like I met some famous designer in the co-op and he told me that <laughs> branding is the best thing you can do. <laughs> but I kind of like, um, I, kind of a, as a youngster, it was one Christmas and I, I remember it. I don't know why I remember it so distinctly, but. I was at school, blah, 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 and that sort of age. And I got a gift that's always sort of like stuck with me. And I don't know why, but it was a pair of socks. <laughs> and I read it quickly and it said Nike. And I was like, oh, brilliant Nike socks. I was like, great. Like, um, And then I looked at it again and it said hike. I was like, what hike? Hike socks. And it's like a, a brand of like hiking, which, yep. which I'm sure were great. But as like a teenager, I was like, what the hell are these? <laughs> and then... Funny enough, the next semester at school, we got rotated in art class to graphic design and sort of it started to be explained like why brands and design and sort of like have influence on us. And I was stuff just started to like fall into place. And that's kind of where I kind of fell in love with um making making pictures, making design and understanding like why we choose things. Obviously back then I would never understand truly, but kind of just having the fun of of playing with um, brands and I remember a project during the Olympics and it well, if you just got mess around with the rings and stuff and you're like loving life, just like creating this iconic really thing. But then like fast forward all the way to kind of where we are now, like worked at a few agencies, moved abroad to New Zealand, worked there for a while, like ran a like, um, head of studio out there and oh, well. an ad agency and then, and then came back and got a, a wicked job at, um, an agency called Kenyon Western, which was like unbelievable in Huddersfield. Um, and they did like stuff with Coke, Mars and Danone. So we had like really good, um, wow. like sort of cast of clients. And then we got made redundant in lockdown. Like everything kind of went yep. peak bomb, as I say. And yep. that was literally about three years ago today. Um, and then, so I got, luckily on the same day, I got a call from a friend who runs a business said, I need some help with some designs, you know, anyone? And I was like, oh my God, the savior. Brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, and then a few a few months later, Nick, my partner, got put on furlough. And I said, look, should we just give it a go? You've got a laptop, I've got a laptop. That's pretty much all we need and our, and our wits. If they don't let us down from time to time. Um <laughs> and so yeah, that's where we started Custom Studio and we've been going for two and a half years now, just sort of steadily like maturing as a as a business um and looking to grow in the next year or so really so yeah mm. hopefully i didn't waffle on there too much not at all not at all but, fascinating I, I i actually love how cool you know how coincidences of things work and how challenging things can be the most positive thing i, I remember i was made redundant from my first ever job which led me to get a job in harrogate which was you know my job i became joint third employee we grew that, you know, we ended up, four of us growing that to 12 million turnover, 100 people. Wow. So 
you know, and if I hadn't been married redundant, I would still probably still be in that job, which was a you know a job for life. It was an easy job. It was easy easy stuff, but um, a bit boring. So I, I always find that you just you know you just never know everything. I think there's a there's a great. I, I always often say to people they're one of the Chinese dialects, and I can't know which one. I'm told that the symbol for um, for challenge has two parts one one being problem and the other being opportunity right and it's i think it's just yeah. how you see it if that makes it's, sense yeah so true like um i think learning from those challenges is the key is the key thing right and seeing you know like understanding how you got there is key to how you get get somewhere else it's not necessarily what you did before that's going to get you to the next level but it's about learning from it yep and putting it into like you say, opportunity and exploit uh, and exploring how that can become something more. Um, so for sure, I mean, uh, what was the company that you said that you, you you start you started? Was it? It was a it was a it was a software consultancy company in the power in the power industry. There was a company right. company called Isis Technology, but it, which is no longer here because we got bought by Siemens twenty odd years ago. But wow. um, but yeah, it was an in, interesting time. Just just joining a business, growing that, and ultimately selling it and. Um, yeah, but I, I've never been there if if we hadn't made it. So it's 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 yeah. definitely just that sliding door moment, isn't it? Where it, if sure. it hadn't happened, if I hadn't been made redundant, I yeah, I totally would have been in a totally different place. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and, and just fascinating. So so I mean, growing up, is this? Did you? Is this the sort of career and job you and, and business you <laughs> see yourself doing, or did you have other other? Uh, no, for for about. 12 years probably or maybe that's probably a bit too long i wanted to be a train driver that's for sure I like really by thomas the tank engine i think i held on to it for a bit too long Wonderful. Uh, and then and then i was always pretty academic at school like um not necessarily well behaved but academic um and because I, I also was creative not necessarily with drawing and stuff like that I always wanted to be able to draw well but there was always someone better than you and then you kind of like I well I kind of sort of left that but creative in a sense of like making up games or you know like uh, solving puzzles and problems like yeah. in different ways um and then at school I went to I went to visit Oxford where I, I wanted to do law at that point for some reason I think I watched one too many Hollywood movies <laughs> and um and then I, I realized this was like coinciding with the time when I sort of found graphic design at school yeah. and I was like this isn't for me like I, I can't I, I couldn't do it I, I just looked at what we had to to learn uh, and, and and sort of then thinking about who would be helping and I was like um oh, it's not for me and so I thought right let's try this graphic design and really? and it just kind of went from there and I just like fell in love with making stuff and without the need to sort of the drawing or the the, the, the physical making be the final product that's part of the journey towards it like the scan yeah. and the sketch and I realized I could I was okay at that I was you know that yeah. that's something I could I could grasp and 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 hone as a skill and so yeah then that's kind of just not a lot back since then I did it at university and um, got first job in Leeds at an agency called Bolsa um, and and then another agency called Banana Kick um, and then then went to New Zealand and then back. Yeah, so yeah. Anyway, give me the last talk again. So, no, all good, all good. And and so looking at obviously customer studio and that's two and a half years. What are some of the challenge? What are some of the significant challenges you've had to overcome as you as you've grown? I think the the one that we are constantly battling against is the consistency in the pipeline of work. Yeah, um, and that is a challenge that we that was just this is ongoing. It's like. Um, I feel like more than ever now, there's more and more competition for us, but also um, there's kind of a bit of a, a bit of a, I suppose a speed bump in helping um, potential clients understand like the value of, of, of brand and why it's so important. And so like, that's kind of our biggest challenge, filling that, filling that pipeline. And last year we, um, we had a huge project, brilliant, like a full rebrand strategy, everything. And, uh, a mobile a app a website wow. uh, you know copy everything like the uh, animation stuff 
and it was a huge project. We were loving it, like proper head in it. And we had a few of the projects that we had going on, kind of like satellite projects and some of our retained work. And then we kind of get to the last month of the project or the last few weeks and we're like, oh, we haven't we, we haven't outreached for the next sort of yes months. And it was our first like six months of business. So we naively kind of just forgot. And I think when we, we sort of realised how, what sort of a good job our last employees did at that, you know, just bringing in work, for, yeah. even if you moaned about you know, leadership or you thought oh, we could do it better, da, 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 that kind of challenge and responsibility of constantly bringing in yeah. And work. Yeah, you've got to hold the hands up and say that, you know, there's a good job at keeping us in in keeping us fed and and in business for so long at places I've worked for. So so yeah, that that's a big challenge, I suppose. Yeah, it it's I think it's Michael Gerber in his book, The E Myth, talks about you know, businesses at, at the start, you know, in the start, that sort of starting phase, we tend to, we get a customer, you know, we get some business and then we deliver it, you know, we get a customer, deliver the business. And then it's like, oh, heck, we've delivered it. Heck, we've got to run run really fast to get the next one. And yeah. and it, it, it's that migration to the point where delivering the work and bringing the work in sort of becomes two wheels so that yeah. we, we're doing both things at the same time bringing, you know, both delivering the work, but bringing the next client on so that they're ready when we're ready. And then it's, it goes off. It's, it's a, it's, yeah. it, 100%. It, there's a trick to it, you know, trick to it there, but you know, it, it is. It's, it's an art, it's, a, it's an art form itself. It's part yes. of it. It's, uh, it's mystic. It's mystical. Are we, with that, um, we hired a, a business development um, consultancy. So like, you know, aid is in that. And right. uh, we know them, from previous agency work and um they specialized in creative industry really? like you know relationships and so that's yep. been good in terms of getting us in front of some people and uh, that we wouldn't know and doing a few projects that we wouldn't um really wouldn't have found so i think that was again like you said like a we we messed up the year before um so we sort of when when the good times came again the next year we said right let's invest now whilst we're really? busy um to kind of to prevent the <laughs> prevent the beans on toast for the next six yes. <laughs> yeah it's feast and famine isn't it that's the challenge while we're in that so, so yeah it's, it, it's it's getting that point so so alongside that what what would you say are some of the biggest things you've learned about business and growing a business crikey um i think not being able to do everything is okay um that's a big learning block for me personally like um like like having like complete trust in someone else as well like not being just told yes. that it's not your job to worry about it which might have been before like um now like i've got a trust in my business partner that he's doing what where he's doing and yep. he's going to get it right or he's going to give his best that's the best thing which is which he always does and uh, and it's why we're still going hopefully um and I suppose um what else have I learned? Ah, I suppose I tell you what one thing I did learn is not to um, not to seek, not to be afraid to seek outside help. And I know this is like it's probably where I would put like a coach or someone else in, but um we did reach out to Adventure, um, a leads kind of um business development. Yes when we in our first year giving us some insights to places that we could um speak to and like maybe even like grants and stuff that we could look at um which i think we are going to look out for hiring someone this this year coming yeah but also like, like we had a project so i hope i'm not waffling but we had a project last just we delivered just in before summer and it was a really interesting one. It's for a business development company, uh, consultancy again. Um, and the owner was like amazing, it's like really bright, bubbly person. And the, she she is from I think she's Yorkshire or, or north somewhere. Um, and she had she had a a cool name, um, but she also loved Hawaii for some reason. She right. Loved Hawaii. And she's like, I don't know what it was, but I wanted to sort of I want something Hawaii-esque in it. And we're like, oh God, that's a that is a goodness. 
it's a, it's a speed bump. Oh, it's a kind of wrenching the thing. Like, oh, how are we going to do this? And we we must have been bumping ahead at the idea for a, for a week or so, and then we just went back to her and and asked her a few more questions. And turned out it was more about the feeling of Hawaii, like the um, sort of calmness you get there, the sense yeah. of community and positive thinking and stuff like that. Um, we're still we're like, oh, how do we how do we do this? I like, couldn't couldn't find a an answer in that felt right without kind of culturally stealing another yeah. <laughs> like being on the wrong side of the line um and i just spoke to my partner about it and we were just walking a little boy and we were just talking i was like i've stuck with this thing i can't i can't do it and she just asked me how the name was spelled and she was like oh is it spelled like this like like rays in the sun, sunshine and i was like oh my god and it just kind of unlocked like a, a like a flood of ideas that and she just asked it innocently like without kind of maybe even understand it. I probably didn't explain it well, but, and I was like, man, sometimes you just got to talk it out with people that you yeah. don't know or people who have got a different view or not, not stuck like I was. Yeah. We were, and it just ended up being a, a really nice little project and she was buzzing with the outcome. And so, yeah, that's something I've definitely learned. So well, yeah, going back to your original question. No, it's a great yeah. question. I mean, the, the next question I was going to ask you, who 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 have been the best coaches you've worked with, whether that's business, sport, life in general? Because great coaches ask you great questions and that helps you find the answer, I find. Um yeah, I think I've, I've been um I've been fortunate to have some great like bosses. I wouldn't um so and colleagues who have seen things a different way. So I'd say that they've gone along the way to help in that respect but I thought you might ask if so I was like oh no I know what I'm going to say but my um it's a it's a sport coach and he's not necessarily the best he was my American football coach at um at university and afterwards um so when I got to you know I wanted to try something new and he was like the first coach there that I met and he just had the most chaotic imagination that just <laughs> allowed him to phrase and give you a different way of looking at the problem in front of you yeah that I've sort of never never forgotten his name was Orlando and I can't really repeat some of the scenarios you would say but for instance like it'd be um you know if your best friend was on the other side of this person like what would what would and he was getting beaten up what would stop you to get there and it was like things like that like just a yep. mindset change or and lots of others but I don't want to repeat but I just never forgot the fact that he was able to to use kind of I don't know like vision like visionary cues to help you overcome a problem like you, sh- you know is the only way to overcome it is is right. like it. so yeah that he was a he was a he was a really cool dude, cool dude to 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 play for and um, that sounds like that sounds great. It's quite an interesting thing actually. One of the interesting questions I often ask people that I'm working with it is when they describe their you know where they are. Um, I say, well, if this was an employee of yours, what would you do? Um, I've, I'm working with a CEO at the moment. He's just come through a, a relatively serious illness. Um, and he's due to jump. He 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 lives remotely. He's due to jump on a plane next week to the UK, and he said that's really going to hit me hard because it's the a the travel and b it's a very heavy schedule. And I said, well, you know, if this was an employee of yours who was who was going through that, what would you say? And he said, well, I'd tell him not to go. Yeah. Said, well, that's the right answer then. You know, it, it's 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 no different whether it's an employee or yourself. Just because you feel committed, you know, that you should do doesn't mean it's the right thing. Um, no, yeah, so, I think that's that's it. Like maybe as a as a business owner, you feel like you should, no matter no matter what, kind of sometimes put yourself in harm's way, despite you, whatever he's telling you up, upstairs. Um, kind of absolutely. And there's been, I mean, talking about American football, there's been some really uh, well known American football coaches over the years that have have got some great quotes and sayings and, and yeah. you know that, that that are great to follow. I know uh, I think Tom Landry was one of the the guys that um I'm I'm familiar with. That's going back that's probably going back 30, 40 years, but you know, was 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 renowned for creating amazing, amazing teams. I mean, and then speaking of quotes and sayings, is there any 
quotes or sayings that you find yourself using a lot that that, that help you move forward? Um, in terms of like um, business, yeah, like when we're talking to clients, like there's um, I'm sure quite a lot of people know now, but like that Simon Sinek, you know, the um, yes. coach and sort of um, famous kind of speaking out. And he obviously just says that kind of people don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. Um, and that just kind of helps people. That really helps us like frame yeah. up the value of brand. And yes, like there's no harm in using, like we use everyone else's quotes in all of our kind of pitch decks because why put it in, in a way that someone else has already perfected? So couldn't agree more. Like, um, yeah, so that's that's a really that's a really good one. And so kind of like off the back of that, like we then kind of launch into it reasons why that that kind of makes sense. And one that really helps like people understand is like when you think of a company like like Patagonia um yep. as a brand, like you know, on the face of it, the thing you're getting is a, a nice fleece. Yep. And yep. you probably get a nice fleece somewhere else. But by buying it from them you're not just buying a fleece you're buying into an idea about something bigger than just the thing and the commodity and that is great for you as a as a punter you can feel good about yourself but it also is great for the brand because they're doing some good but they're also allowing them to add more you know charge more for it because the value of it is high a lot higher to the person the individual and so, like sometimes, again, like using that to explain to, to businesses that that strength of brand and reason and purpose is so important, not just for a, a good shiny logo and a color that stands out. It's for that kind of to raise that value, to to raise that kind of credibility that um, no, if there's there's real monetary value in it, and yeah. it not only improves what you can charge but it also reduces what you need to spend like yeah then you build trust and loyalty based on something semi-intangible you know what i mean like kind of a a promise or a a way someone feels about you so so yeah that's that's a that's a quote that always helps us segue into something kind of meaningful towards that whoever we're talking to when it comes to proposals or pitches or the like so fantastic and and Alex, what would you say you've learned about yourself throughout your career and your journey so far? Um, oh man, why are you asking these tough questions uh, <laughs> about myself? It's tough. I think um, I realised that I'm. I, I think I'm. I am a team player in terms yep. of like, like things like this. Like talking, you know, solo is is harder for me to to do personally. Yep if if there's a two of us or if there's three of us and um like when it's kind of pushing myself or you know i think yeah, yeah. i i struggle but when it's the team like when if, whether i'm playing football or anything like that or whether i'm in business if there's someone else i'm accountable for i can i can find an extra gear or an extra whatever whatever's needed to to achieve it so i think that's what i've learned i more than anything is that um i need a team to to kind of be, I suppose, efficient and and yeah. and some sort some sort of kind of successful as a as a business person. Brilliant, and it, it's great to have that self awareness because it does it really helps because there's no you know it, therefore there's no it, it get get you know the sooner you can get into a team environment. I, and I'm quite similar myself. Is I like you know I like to work with other people, and I've had quite significant periods when I've not, and it's not as, um, you know, I, I just don't feel as effective. And um, once you get back into that mantle of a team, you start to realise how you can work off the synergies of, of the different people in, in that team. Yeah, definitely. Like, I mean, how did you find, like, um, you know, like making decisions when you're on your own, like, you know, when you're kind of working with yourself, like, did you find yourself going around in circles or was it kind of easier or... It's, it's a really good question. Um, we, we because of the fast new, moving nature of the business, uh, we were growing massively. We were going at the, my part of the business was doing like four hundred percent a year for sort of th- three or four years. Um, the 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 philosophy I had to come up with was, 
you 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 can't you have to make a decision. Make, make you know not make a decision is the worst thing possible. So yeah. we have to make a decision, and then but the way I sort of gave myself some comfort um, about making a decision, probably with not you know with, with less than one hundred percent the information was, I'll make the decision, and then by my actions, I'll do my best to make it the right decision. Yeah. If that makes sense, yeah. um, and, and sometimes you make bad decisions, and that's that's accepting yeah. that too, and not not beating ourselves up too much about making a bad decision. As um, a, a, from, from my perspective, as long as we learn from the decision, then it's never a failure. It's just a learning. Yeah, and, and it, it it's really important. Our founder Brad Sugars, he he said something to me a long time ago that that's really stuck with me, and it. He's a very, very successful guy. So he's last last time we looked, we looked, he was worth several hundred million quid. So he's he's, he's a very successful guy. And, and he said that he believes he's as successful as he is because he he's made because of the mistakes he's made, not despite them. Yeah. And and I drew from that it's the willingness to try things that that helps people be successful, even though some of them will fail. And it's being comfortable with a, le- a, a, le- a level of failure, I think, is quite key. Yeah, uh, yeah, couldn't agree more. It sounds like a sounds like he knows what he's doing. If he's, uh, yeah, he's done. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, I sometimes I wish that um, I could I th- like channel a bit more of that into the way I make business decisions. Like, just quick, just try it. If if it's not like super, 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 super critical, like the business is going to fail if I make this decision and just do it. Like I've always like in every other aspect of life, I'm always give it a go and just see what happens. Yep. Like uh, <laughs> I literally played every sport and like tried every like thing that you can do from like horse riding to clarinet to tennis. Wow. Just, like, really? Well, I've failed at loads of them. Like just went like, great. At it. But I love, love trying it. Yeah. Whereas, sometimes now like I feel like I just need to like embrace that side of like myself outside of business and bring it in and quickly do it and learn and enjoy it and then move on or so yeah it, the, the pace of business and certainly growing businesses is for me it is it it's really important to get comfortable with making decisions and, and living with an element of of them, not not all of them being the, the right decisions. It, it is it comes with the territory. It's tough, especially when we want to get things right. But you know, you, uh, you I found it's just sometimes we've just got to crack on because cracking on is better than not making a decision. Um, that's that's probably the worst thing we could do because everything is changing around us. So we, we cannot stay the same. Nothing stays the same. Um, yeah, hundred percent. Especially at the moment, like crack is yes. Every day something comes out that you it's like threatening jobs or um kind of adding to adding to jobs so it's quite interesting at the minute like you're making decisions learning new skills and um being willing to try new things is it's literally like nothing it's not been more kind of apt than it right now it feels couldn't couldn't agree more and and so it's looking forward what what does the future look like for you guys and what challenges do you think you might face if any i think um Aspirationally, like we want to reach the size where we've got maybe sort of 10, 10 staff, kind of all kind of uh, a good level of, um, so maybe not not too junior, like so we can all like add, um, obviously we're, we're happy to bring juniors up, um, but like that's where we want to get to. Like, we've got um, a nice little team that we can, we can reach out to the bigger jobs and do a really good job and lots of nice perspectives on that. Um, so that's kind of where we'd like to get to as a business. And and as I said before, like really helping those businesses that have got something great, but not saying it and like coax that out of them. I think the big challenge for us is, um, like I say, just keeping that pipeline just consistent yeah. enough where we can grow without too much risk. Like, myself and my business partner we're happy to sort of take risk for ourselves because you know it's our business and the rewards and the risks are are both ours but have been responsible for someone else and their well-being and their life uh, we feel like we have a big responsibility to be a lot more i suppose sure about bringing someone in Um, 
and bringing people in. So yeah, that's that's the big challenge: keeping that pipeline nice and nice and full, ready to oh, absolutely ready to, ready to grow. Absolutely, just keeping people in the you know each stage of that sort of funnel of of prospect yeah. right the way down to to highlight to buy. It's, it's yeah, it's it's that challenge of doing that alongside delivery. And I know, I know that's a, a, a can be a difficult balancing act. But uh, but what but, is that sort of a challenge that you see a lot in a lot oh of, yeah kind of like a very I, it's really common it's certainly in you know relatively early stages because it is that you know we because we're doing everything we've got to get the clients and then we've got to deliver the work and so obviously if the folks aren't delivering the work then the client the, the client generation tends to to suffer and it is is starting to allocate time to both that you know in an average working week is really quite key is so look you know how much time do i need to bring new clients on a couple of days okay so i'm only going to allocate three days to doing the work and if i do that whatever the balance is two and three one and four um that means i'm we're more likely to have the next client ready when we finish this work um yeah definitely I feel like a, like sorry go on. Go on, no go on. no i feel like um over the last sort of month or so getting out to more and more networking things out of hours where i'm not nothing's expected from a client so you know that's just time that can be can be used to, yes. to find new to find new clients it's quite helps that like, just even confidence in expressing you know who we are as business and yep also just create that we've managed to like help like them with other stuff and um you know hopefully you know they'll, they'll turn into something for us as well but um Brilliant. yeah networking stuff is is it feels like it's it's daunting at first, but then if you can find the ones that you you're comfortable at, it's 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 actually really good. For, and like everyone's got something interesting to talk about, so yeah, it, it it's I think the I think the secret of any sale, but especially that you know networking as a process is it's all about asking questions rather than giving answers. It's like just be interested in people, and they'll start being interested in us. It's it's as simple as that for me. Yeah. Is that I don't have to go out and be some you know I don't have to give some amazing presentation or tell a load of people how great we are just ask them what they're interested in until they start asking us um you know what ask them what they do be interested in it until they ask us and then we've we've got we've got the ability to do so it's um it yeah it, it it's good for so alex i'm keen to know what you'd say to anyone that was thinking of going into business right now um i think like you've like we've touched on before understanding like having a, a reason why you're doing it yes um, is key and if you've got a strong one and you believe in it and you're passionate about it and there's a real opportunity for you to for you to make your difference in it you don't have yep. to necessarily like go in and be the the world leader in it straight away but you can you know why not give it a go yeah I think for yeah for us it was low risk because we didn't need stock or anything like that. I understand like there's a lots of companies that have different yes. from costs, but like I say, if you, you've got a reason why you feel like it's a why not give it a go? You know, you live one really? thing, so. oh, absolutely. In words of Nike, just do it. I think that's bang on. <laughs> we'll, we'll 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 go with that. And um, if you started again, is there anything in the, the business again? Is there anything significant? you do differently do you think um i think the one significant thing we do is we recently maybe about six months ago did our own sort of um internal sort of brand yeah structure in in and um reason for being and just clarifying it and we both knew that we worked well together and in, in previous jobs and uh, we knew that we we're both like decent at what we did yeah but we didn't spend time to kind of like understand why and who we like to help and we did that about six months ago and luckily like i'm a bit more outgoing and and nick's a bit more security which is actually great because he's like client side and i'm creative um so i think we've just done that sooner and have a really really clear picture of of where we are now which is i'm feeling like really confident for the future so um, yeah great before we were just kind of just creating work and enjoying it whilst it we were doing it sort of thing great yeah i i i do find working with businesses that one of the most important thing is to know 
ultimately know what it looks like when it's finished. And it, it, that may be a long way away, but where, where are we headed? So especially with partners to make sure you're aligned together to the yeah. future. Because, you know, ultimately, personally, um, you know, it's almost statistically impossible you'll have the same outcome personally. Therefore, you know, it, it, it sometimes it's worth understanding what the business needs to do to deliver both your goals and then yeah. create it in that way. Um, it, it, Definitely. It, I mean, we, we, we had the conversations at the start, like we didn't want to grow to a huge huge agency and like have a thousand staff to manage so yeah um it's not going going to happen anytime soon but um but we also said we kind of want it to be a, a business that fits with our life so yeah. we've like we've always said like we, it can't be like we've been at agencies before where we're just grounded into the pool but at times we, we've got to create something that we think is right and obviously we're willing to graft and do the the hard yards when need to be but it's not like it's not that over life and yeah. so like i've just had a little, little boy and nick's um got a partner so he's she, she um she lives in the netherlands so he spends two weeks here two weeks there so oh, well it's like an interesting like that's a curveball we didn't see coming um, yeah but because we had that sort of mindset of lifestyle first we, we've sort of it's 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 fine it's part of who we are so um yeah great uh 100 a, a lot is it's funny i i'm just thinking of putting a piece out actually where you know people talk about work-life balance and most people don't have it um don't have work-life balance and i i i actually believe in work-life imbalance but imbalance towards life not work because it's like it should be that way around most people the best they're talking about is balance the two well like you know it, a business business is there to give the owners the lifestyle they choose to have. That that's the primary primary purpose of an owner managed business is to give you guys the lifestyle you choose to have. If it's if it's not, then why why do it? Because you know it's it's a tough gig having a business, so it's reasonable you get the benefits and the rewards that you deserve. In my opinion, yeah, definitely. I couldn't agree more. Like a like we're lucky that we enjoy our job. Which yeah, is good. yeah, um, because it's so varied in meeting people and chatting and. Like literally creating stuff like that, you know. Um, my partner's a she's works in medicine, so she comes home with absolute like contrasting stories. When I'm yeah. moaning about like, oh, man, I couldn't find the the right color for this thing today, and she's like, oh, this person's depressed and they need this. And I'm like, oh god, and my my problems become very like yeah, understand problem really. So um, so yeah, I couldn't agree more. Uh, like that balance is. Is so important or imbalance as you say yeah i believe yeah i think i think you're just getting away from this idea that you know the best we can do is balance the two i think it's just to be like let's work on imbalance and have some fun with that so yeah uh, alex uh, just f- final question for you what would be the adv- best advice you could give an 18 year old you if you could go back in time and do so oh uh, apart from like like really make the most of it because 18 was amazing um <laughs> it's great uh, I think it'd probably be like, don't be afraid to like, within within business, like, like be yourself a bit more. Um, yeah. Like, I think that'd be it. Like, a, I think in, outside of, as I said before, outside of business, like I'm very open to try and do everything and like be involved in whatever. Um, whereas in in my working life, I've been a bit more kind of cautious with. Um, with staying with maybe companies too long or kind of not trying to push myself to, um, I don't know, have an opinion that because someone else a higher up got a different opinion. So yeah, I think it'd just be like back, back yourself and be, be a bit more like yourself outside of work, inside of work. Really very sad advice. I think, you know, a lot of people use that word authentic. It's just be yourself. Yeah, because yeah, ultimately, said that. <laughs> ultimately people buy us, therefore, you know, they want to buy the right us, don't they? Really, the person that we really are, not the per- purpose person we may think we need to to to. But but it's it's a difficult thing to learn and to sign on to because we, you know, we are taught to sort of comply with certain norms and standards. But I I guess the, the benefit of, of one of the benefits of COVID and what it did did for the world is sort of reset the clock. And it was you know it, it's a whole you know it's a, it is a whole new world there. So it's okay to be different and be ourselves or whoever that would be i think a lot more than maybe it would have been before covid yeah yeah 100 i think uh 
think you hit the nail on the head there. You, a lot more opportunities now to set your own little things up and, and be wherever you like try to be wherever you want to be now. I think um, so yeah, yeah, could be more. Well, Alex, thank you so much for your time. It's been fascinating. I really, really enjoyed our, our conversation. And for anyone that's interested in contacting you or, or, or your business, what would be the best way to do that? Um, so through the website, which is uh, the, the custom studio.co.uk, or you can reach me at um, alex at the custom studio.co.uk. Um, yeah, just give us a shout if you want to chat about anything brand or, you know, um, yeah, just like want to see how you can prove kind of what you've got. Really? Yeah. Well, Alex, thank you so much. We, we'll it'd be nice to swing by in another six to twelve months and just see how things are developed and where you guys are going. But uh, until then, thanks so much for your time today. Yeah, thanks very much. Nice to meet you. Cheers.